Blender 4.0's new lighting system is a big deal and it changes everything about how we can work with lighting in Blender. This video is sponsored by Asus and Intel. Now you may have already heard of Blender's light leaking feature. It was popular when 3.6 was out. However, it got pushed to 4.0 and they've since added new features and also changed the interface to make it easier to use. And if you're not sure what light linking is, light linking makes it so that you can set so certain lights only affect certain objects. But now we also have the ability to control which lights cast shadows on which objects individually. Now, first up, I'm going to start with this boring default cube example so you can fully grasp how to use the tools, but we're gonna dive into some cooler examples later and why this is such a big deal. So first of all, in here, you can see that I have everything in collections. Now collections play a big role in how this system works. So you can see here that I have two collections with my various objects in it. So here I have my cube collection and a plane collection. Now, if I go ahead here and snap into rendered view, we'll be able to see that we have a point light above here, and this is affecting the lighting on our cube. And it is also casting a shadow on the plane, making it a perfect example to show how this works. So what we wanna do is come up here to the point light. If we come over here to the object properties, we will see that there is a shading tab and down here, we have this option for shadow linking. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that and you'll see that you normally would have a new collection here. We also have light linking as well. So let's start with light linking. As I mentioned before in the video, light linking makes it so that certain lights only light certain objects. So let's go ahead here, click new here. It'll give us an automatic name, light linking to point. And then what we can do is on this point light, we can drag the objects in here that we want this light to affect. You'll notice by default, it doesn't do anything. So we'll go ahead here, drag this cube here, and you'll see that now we are only lighting the cube in the scene. If I go ahead and click this button here, you'll see that now we are lighting everything except for the cube. So this is basically an inclusion or an exclusion button. Great, let's go ahead and get rid of that for now, return our scene to normal. Now let's look at how shadow linking works. Go ahead here, click new. You'll see that we get an automatic name. We're gonna go ahead and do the same process here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this cube in here. You see at the moment that we are including the cube with this light on to cast shadows. However, if we wanted to light this cube, but we didn't wanna cast shadows from this specific object, we can go ahead and toggle this to exclude the shadow casting from that. All right, so that's cool in this cube example, but how does this work in a real world example? Let's dive into a few different ways so I can explain why this, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful features ever added to Blender. All right, in this example here, we can see that I have a character model and I've put them on a psych wall. I wanna go ahead and I wanna light that character with the psych wall in the back. However, you can see that I want a strong separation light here and also some fill light up in the front. So I've put a point light here in front of our character and an area light behind our character. The problem being, in order to get the lighting that I wanted, it intersected or touched or was too close to the psych wall here, and now I'm getting these ugly hot spots and these random shadows that I don't want. And this is an incredibly common example of how you might would use light grouping. So let's go ahead here, and we're going to grab the area light here, come over to the object properties tab, go to light linking, and then we're going to drag the shark in there and set it to the inclusion. Likewise, I'm gonna go ahead here, do the same thing with the point light there, click new, and then go ahead here and drag the shark in there. So now you can see I'm getting all that lighting on my character. However, this psych wall is only getting lighting from this area light and my world lighting as well. This way I can kind of help my character pop off the background and have a lot of control, flexibility, and creativity over the lighting of this character without having to worry about all the light pollution or shadows that may come off of the lights. Let's look at a bit more complicated of an example. Now here you can see I have an example from my short film where I was doing a full set and I was having a hard time separating my character from the background here. So you can see that the background is on sand and my character is in this yellow here. And I wanted to create more separation. So what I would normally wanna do is kind of maybe have a separation light there. And you can see that by kind of 
backlighting the character and raising that light up, I can get a bit more separation and help that character pop off the background. The problem being, I get this ugly hotspot here. So in my final solution, before light linking was a thing, what I ended up doing was kind of a spotlight and kind of making it larger and kind of blending the edges, as you can see here. And this was an okay solution, but I was still getting kind of a hot spot on the sand that I really wish wasn't there. So let's take a look at how we'd go about doing that now. You see here that on the area light, I've created a characters tab, drag that in here, and I just turn on this inclusion tab. And now you can see that if I zoom in here, I'm getting this nice background separation here on the character, but it's not affecting the sand at all. This is another great practical example. But let's look at another one that's even a little bit more complex. Now, in this example here, you can see that I've modeled a ship in a bottle. And unfortunately, the lighting inside of the bottle is too dark due to the transmissive properties of the glass. This is about the thickness of the glass I wanted, and this is the brightness I wanted on the background of the scene. However, you can see here that I'm not getting enough light in there. This is another great example of where we could set several point lights into the glass in order to kind of brighten up the inside of the bottle without affecting the rest of the psych wall. Now, what I ended up solving before I could use light linking is I plug this light path with a ray depth, a less than math node, and a limiter here. And by plugging that into the alpha, I was able to kind of turn down the alpha of the glass, but maintain my reflections. So that's just a little kind of free trick in this lighting video. Now you might be thinking that why would you want to go about this direction and not do realistic lighting? Well, let's look at an example from something like Pixar. Here we have a screenshot from Toy Story 1. Of course, there are a lot of contributing factors to how 3D has improved over the time, but let's take a look at the eyes here and notice how lifeless they feel. Now let's take a look at Toy Story 4. Notice all the highlights in the eyes. Now it is possible to get these highlights in the eyes through realistic lighting. However, it is very common in both CG films and video games to have point lights set to light links attached to the character's eyes. And those eye highlights lead to a lifelike look that draws the viewer into the character's eyes. This is just one example of how Hollywood commonly breaks realistic lighting and utilizes tools like this. Now let's talk about our sponsor for a moment. Now I'm a big ASUS fan, so I was excited when they contacted me. I have a ZenBook Pro Duo laptop and a Procreator motherboard in my desktop, both great products. Now this is the ASUS ProArt StudioBook 16 OLED, powered by an Intel Core i9-13980HX processor and an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 laptop GPU. Its CPU ensures you have a fast viewport performance and the GPU will blast through renders. Check the specs at the bottom of the screen here. One of the standout features is the ASUS dial. This intuitive physical controller gives you precise fingertip control over parameters in your creative apps like brush size. The casing is nice and feels premium. It comes with antimicrobial guard. It is able to inhibit up to 99% of bacterial growth over a 24 hour period, perfect for people who love to eat while working or work in public environments. It also has this amazing, flexible 180 degree viewing display. Now, ASUS also has this awesome thing called a MUX switch. And what this does is essentially allow your GPU to bypass the CPU and push its frames directly to the display, reducing latency and boosting frame rates by an average of 9% in their tests. It also comes with the ASUS Pen 2.0, which is great for drawing and sculpting on the screen. It comes with a gorgeous 16 inch Lumina OLED screen, 3.2K resolution, and it has an amazing resolution. You can see the full specs here at the bottom of the screen, but simply put, it's stunning. Check out the link in the description to explore more about this laptop and the amazing Intel processor powering it. Don't miss out.